Hello, what's going on kids? This is the Scientific Mind with Sir Eman. Of course, that's me. And for those who still don't know me yet, this is my profile. Since this is the Scientific Mind, we are going to discuss different science topics because there is nothing more exciting than unveiling the mystery of life through science. But before we proceed with our discussion for today, let first us a guidance to the Omnipotent One above. So a moment of silence for our prayer. Before we jump to our discussion for today, I will discuss first the activities or worksheet that you are going to answer for this week. So these are the activities assigned for each day. So this is the first activity which you are going to answer after watching this video. It is entitled Let's Organize. This is a graphic organizer in which you are going to fill in the missing parts description and functions to complete the entire concept of the circulatory system. So this is the graphic organizer about the circulatory system. For Tuesday, you are going to answer this crossword puzzle. You are going to write the term that is being described in each item. It also has Visualizing concept in which you are going to name the parts of the heart. Third worksheet which you are going to answer on Wednesday after watching the video about human respiratory system is this concept diagram. Trace the flow of blood through the heart. Fill in the diagram using the terms in the box. Part B is a multiple choice. On the line provided, write the letter that corresponds to the correct answer. And part C, answer the following questions thoroughly. Also, the last worksheet which you are going to answer on the fourth day is this test yourself. Part A, multiple choice on the line provided, write the letter that corresponds to the correct answer. B. Essential questions. You are going to answer the following questions thoroughly. You are going to answer all of this worksheet on a clean, short band paper. And for those who have means of downloading and printing this worksheet, go to LMS Science Class and download using the link provided. Okay, so let's start the discussion of the human circulatory system. Human circulatory system. 
Human circulatory system is also known as the cardiovascular system. The organ system responsible for the transport of nutrients, gases, waste, and hormones. So, the nutrients from the food that we eat, the gases like oxygen that we inhale, waste materials such as carbon dioxide, and other toxic chemicals, and hormones that are needed by certain glands in our body are being transported through the help of circulatory system. It also closely tied up to the respiratory system. The organ system in charge of gas exchange through the pulmonary circulation. The circulatory system is also function as a busy highway that connects all the cell in the body. Trivia In 1628, English physician William Harvey discovered that blood circulates in one direction in a circuit throughout the body. On a later part of our discussion, we are going to discuss the two types of circulation. So what are the three parts of the circulatory system? We have the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. First, let's tackle about the heart. Heart is also known as the living pump. Heart is a cone-shaped muscular organ approximately the size of your fist. So if you are going to close your fist, so that is the size of your heart. Heart pumps blood throughout the body. Heart is also located at the center of the chest between lungs. Human heart is divided into two halves, the left and the right. Right half contains the oxygenated blood coming from all body parts. This brings oxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation or gas exchange, while the left half receives oxygenated blood coming from the lungs, then pumps this oxygenated blood to all body parts and organs. Parts of the heart It has superior vena cava, superior node, pulmonary veins, atrioventricular node, right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, inferior vena cava, aorta, septums, working fibers, left ventricle, mitral valve, left atrium, pulmonary veins, pulmonary artery, aorta, and artery. This image shows how the oxygenated blood from different parts of the body enters the heart, becomes oxygenated in the lungs, and how it is being pumped back to the different parts or organ in the body. As you will notice in this diagram, there are two arrows of different color, one with violet color and the other one is with red color. Violet colored arrow represent the oxygenated blood while the red colored arrow represent oxygenated blood. If the oxygenated blood comes from the upper part of the body, it will enter the heart through the superior vena cava. If it comes from the lower part of the body, it will enter through inferior vena cava. After in after in entering after entering superior or inferior vena cava, it will pass through right atrium, then to the right ventricle. Once it is in the right ventricle, the the oxygenated blood will go to the right or the left lung, and it will become oxygenated. Then this oxygenated blood will leave the lung and enters the heart through the pulmonary veins. After passing through pulmonary veins, it will enter the left atrium, then to the left ventricle, and then the aorta. Then after aorta, it will be transported into the different organs in the body.
to summarize how our heart work, it will follow these six steps. 1. Blood in need of oxygen enters the heart. 2. Blood passes from the right atrium to right ventricle. 3. Right ventricle sends blood needing oxygen to the lungs. 4. Oxygen-rich or oxygenated blood from the lungs enters the heart. 5. Blood passes from left atrium to the left ventricle. And 6. Left ventricle sends oxygenated blood throughout the body. The second organ of the circulatory system is the blood or the fluid of life. Blood is the internal circulating medium of the body that gives life to the cell. So why circulating medium? It circulates inside our human body and carries or transport materials. Transport raw materials and hormones to the target cells. Remove waste from the cells. Bring metabolic waste to the specific excretory organs of the body to avoid the buildup of toxic materials. Regulates acid-base balance in the body. Protects the body from diseases and blood loss. Where are blood cells made? Blood cells are made in the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the spongy material in the center of the bones that makes all types of blood cells. Blood cells formed in the bone marrow start out as a stem cell. A stem cell or hematopoietic stem cell is the first phase of all blood cells. As the stem cells matures, several distinct cells evolve. This includes red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Blood has four main components. The plasma erythrocytes or the red blood cells, the thrombocytes or the platelets, and the leukocytes or the white blood cells. Plasma Plasma is a liquid uncloated or uncoagulated part of blood that is transparent and straw-colored. Carries the blood components throughout the body. When separated from the rest of the blood, Plasma is a light yellow liquid. The main role of plasma is to take nutrients, hormones, and proteins to the different parts of the body that need it. Red blood cells or erythrocytes. Red blood cells carry fresh oxygen throughout the body. Red blood cells are round with a flattish indented center like donuts without a hole. So how red blood cells work? Hemoglobin is the protein inside red blood cells. It carries oxygen. Red blood cells also remove carbon dioxide from your body, transporting it to the lungs for you to exhale. Red blood cells are made in the bone marrow. They typically live for about 120 days, then they die. <laughs> Next component of the blood is the white blood cells, also known as leukocytes. They protect you against illness and diseases. White blood cells are divided into five divisions, the monocytes, lymphocytes, neutrophil, basophil, and eosinophil. Monocytes. It helps to break down bacteria. Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes create antibodies to fight against bacteria, viruses, and other potentially harmful invaders. Next is the neutrophil. Neutrophil kills and digests bacteria and fungi. Neutrophil is the first line of defense when infection strikes. こちら白血球、抗中球か。唯一一四六の侵入した細菌のクジョ完了。白血球、外部から体内に侵入した細菌やウイルスなどの異物の排除が主な仕事。抗中球は血液中の白血球の半数以上を占める。Next is eosinophil. Eosinophil attacks and kill parasites and cancer cells. 
確かに私は発見球として最近を駆除するのが仕事だでも私にはもう一つの使命がある寄生虫を駆除することだ高三級の働き寄生虫が体内に侵入した際その殺傷を助けるなど寄生虫感染に対する防御を行う Next component of blood is platelet. Platelets are tiny blood cells that help your body form clots to stop bleeding. If one of your blood vessels gets damaged, it sends out signals to the platelets. The platelets then rush to the sites of damage. They form a plug or clot to fix damage. The normal platelet count is 150,000 to 450,000. Platelets per microliter of blood. The risk for bleeding develops if a platelet count falls below 10,000 to 20,000. 血小板、血液に含まれる細胞成分の一種。血管が損傷した時に集合して、その傷口を塞ぎ止血する。Blood type. Classification of blood based on the presence and absence of antibodies and inherited antigen substances on the surface of red blood cells. There are four main blood types: the A, B, AB, and O. This is a red blood cell compatibility table. In this part shows the blood type of the recipient or the person who are going to receive the blood. While this part shows the blood type of the donor or the person who will give the blood. Next organ in the circulatory system is the blood vessels or the alleys and highways. It is a vessel in the human or animal body in which the blood circulates. Blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart are called arteries, and their very small branches are called arterioles. Blood cells consist of three kinds: arteries, veins, and capillaries. Arteries. Arteries are blood vessels that deliver oxygen-rich blood from the heart. To the tissues of the body, carries oxygenated blood except for pulmonary arteries. The right coronary artery, the left main coronary, the left anterior descending, and the left circumflex artery are the four major coronary arteries. Continually branch out, forming a hollow tree that enters organ called arterioles. Arteries and arterioles have evolved to withstand the pressure caused by the flow of blood from the heart. Next, veins. Veins are blood vessels that are responsible for carrying blood away from the heart. It contains the oxygenated blood except for pulmonary veins. Valves are muscular, flap-like structures that are found between atria, ventricles, and some large arteries are attached to the heart. And in veins, which prevent the backflow of blood. The last type of blood vessel are the capillaries. It is the thinnest and thinnest of all blood vessels. Forms a vast network where you exchange materials, gas, nutrients, and waste takes place in the body. The exchange of materials between the bloodstream and the body cells takes place by diffusion through the capillary walls. Circulatory pathways. The blood vessels of the body are functionally divided into two distinct team circuits: the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. The pump for the pulmonary circuit, which circulates blood through the lungs, is the right ventricle. The left ventricle is the pump for the systemic circuit, which provides the blood supply for the tissue cells of the body. Pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation transport oxygen for blood or the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. 
where blood picks up the new blood supply, then it gets returned to the oxygen-rich blood to the left atrium. Systemic Circulation The systemic circulation provides the functional blood supply to all body tissue. It carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells and picks up carbon dioxide and waste products. Systemic circulations carry oxygenated blood from the left ventricle through the arteries to the capillaries in the tissues of the body. From the tissue capillaries, the deoxygenated blood returns through a system of veins to the right atrium of the heart. Okay, so this image shows the systemic and the pulmonary circuit. That ends our episode for today. I hope you learn and enjoy watching.